this session i would like to discuss high order functions uh, before starting this discussion uh, i would like to remind what we discussed so far so in the functional programming basic building block of any functional programming language are uh, languages a pure functions pure functions depends only on its input parameters and its internal algorithm so when you input uh, same input values in finite set of times even it re should return the same output value so as we discussed there for same input it should return same output depend on only its uh, internal algorithm it should not depend any external parameters that's what we call it as side effects we, uh, the pure functions should not have any side effects so most of the functional programming language we solve the problem by combining such small small pure functions so when you work with the pure functions basically we have several uh, special features which scala has so one of the feature uh, feature is called functions with name arguments usually it is a normal function pool the arguments in the call match one by one in order of the parameters of call function name arguments allow you to pass the argument to the function in the different order as you may under, understood when you call a function the first parameter is assigned to the first argument of the function second parameter is assigned to the second argument of the function but name in the arguments we can kind of skip that order you can say first one is assigned to maybe a third or maybe to second like that in any, any any order so for example so let's say there is a function called print int which take two parameters integer a and integer b to this function uh, and when you call the function print int here in the main method so you see here i am passing b equal 5 and a equal 7 so that is for it has name arguments i name the argument i am passing so that means my first argument is not a it is b so this b is assigned to the second so first argument is assigned to second and the second argument is assigned to first usually we are not doing that we usually we map first argument to first second to second but in case we want to make sure uh, the arguments uh, names with the call we use this name argument method so it's it's a very rare basically we should use that but this facility is there if we want but it better we, we omit this name argument feature because it might confuse uh, the entire kind of readability of the program and uh, Scala also allow you to indicate that last parameter of the function repeated several times that means we can have a dynamic number of parameters in our functions so following is this example for example so let's say there is a number called a uh, function called at numbers it take x parameter called x and int and we put a star star a we have the dynamic number of integer parameters to this particular function so for example we can call this add number with one parameter maybe add number with two parameters add number with three parameters and so on so the whatever the last parameter we can repeat so if you have two parameters and first last one is we put star it can repeat and create a function with dynamic number of input parameters so in that situation uh, we can access those parameters for example here in this set number we add all those numbers together here you see i am using a for loop very rarely in functional programming we use loops but just to give you an introduction how scala loops works i am using for loop here here i say in scala 4 and x is the input parameter and i put arrow in this side and then what's happened all parameters which passes 
one by one resign to the i and then we can add i to the total and we finally return the total from add number functions so this is how simple all of in scala uh, look like but usually in the function and programming we rarely use loops instead of you try to use recursions and some other very interesting methods available called map uh, filter and so on we'll discuss later on And then there is other feature available in functions, especially if you pure functions. Uh, call it has, uh, name it has, functions called by name. Uh, basically, typical parameters of functions are called by value, by value parameters. So we pass the value to that functions, as you know. But some in the in functional program allows, especially in Scala allows us to pass code instead of a value. So usually when you pass a value, it is an integer or a string or something like that. But in the call by name method, we pass a function. Uh, we can say it as a function or some block of expressions. So then what's happened when that function calls, whatever the block of expression we pass executed. So that is executed at the time only we call that. So in order to understand what the concepts behind that, let's take some example. So we have a uh, object called test. It has a main method and then there is a method called time and then there is a method called delay. So when you have a look on the uh, time method, you see it may not take any parameters, into parameters. They are what it do, it return the system time. So obviously this time function is a, not a pure function because its return value is different. It has some side effects. So definition of this time, you may understood it's not a pure function. It's anyway, it's a function which returns time in the nanosecond, right? So what we want to implement is a function called delay, uh, which uh, uh, delays sometimes, uh, kind of, which passes through its parameters. So as you may see in the delay function, we are taking not uh, integer or double or value, instead of we are taking here actually a code block, or what we call it as uh, another function, I'll come to that in a minute, code block. So they are in this T represent, you know, this is a variable type which passing X, Y like that. And after colon, we have to give the type of this variable we are passing to this function. Here, you see, we are not, we, we see here, it's actually not a, a integer or a string or whatever. We here see arrow and long. That, that tells the system we are passing a code block to this delay method, which returns a long value, right? So then you see if delay functions fall in there, in the main method, in the main method, we, we, what we pass is a time function. So this is a time function. So in the time function has no input and return a long. This, this one is a long value, right? So, so when you call delay, it actually pass the delay function, this particular function, or what you call it as code block to the delay. So this code block will execute it in the delay function and get the value. So how we execute that? So we call this code block here. So by passing T, we ask the system to execute T. So when I call that T, only that plays this code block is going to be executed. But typically, when you pass a value, which value is assigned to the variable at the beginning when you pass that. But here, we are passing a code block, or in other words, it's a function, and then it executed at the time we want. So this is called function called by name. Similarly, there is a other feature available in functional programming especially in Scala call, it has default values or the default parameters. In the default parameters, 
we uh, we can assign the value while we define the function here for example we define the function for add initially x is 2 and y is 3 so there what's happened if you don't pass any parameter to this particular function it takes the default value if you pass a parameter argument to this function add so then it takes the value we pass. If you don't pass it, it takes the default value. Like that, we can define the function with a default value. Right. So as you may remember, after we study those functions and we we'll discuss more features of the function uh, uh, and a few minutes ago with this session, and then uh, the other important feature in the recur uh, functional programming is the recursions of the recursive functions. In the last lesson, we discussed in detail these recursive types and the way we call the recursive function and so on. The recursion discuss the calling the same function within the body of the function. So there we can call the same function once or multiple times, or we can indirectly call the same function. So. Uh, so we discuss this kind of like direct recursions, uh, kind of linear recursions, scale recursions, and different types of recursions uh, available, recursive methods. Right. In the recursive, uh, a recursive place, as you understood, is a big role of functional programming here. For example, this factorial function, which call the same function within the body. This is to remind you what recursive functions means. Right, now let's come to the subject we're going to discuss in this class. So in this class, we, we, uh, we would like to discuss, in this today lesson, we would like to discuss basically uh, high order functions. In order to understand how high, how high order functions works, we already discussed that. Uh, so first of all, I will introduce something called lambda functions. So a lambda calculus introduced by a long time ago in 1930 by uh, to kind of formally verify some actions that is uh, be sometimes considered as the very early stage of computer science. Uh, and uh, uh, there is a mathematician for church who actually he defined that concepts and he, he, he basically take a symbol called lambda to uh, to express his idea of these functions because of that we call this early stage of programming uh, functions are we usually call it as lambda functions so in the modern functional programming language lambda functions means anonymous functions anonymous functions means actually the functions we handle as a value or maybe we can handle those functions as a variable. <clears throat> in, in we will discuss how those lambda or anonymous functions works in the functional programming. So the anonymous functions are very interesting elements where we could define a function in very lightweight method. So, so by doing that, we have opportunity to formally verify those functions as well. Uh, later on, plus formally verify our applications as well. So let, let me remind you how we define a function in a typical way. So we use a def keyword and then function name. So and the list of parameters and the return time. That call it as actually declaration of the function. Or we call it as a function header. And then we can put the function header together with the function body that call it as definition of the function. There are two things, declaration of the function and definition of the function. Declaration de declares the header of the function. Header of the function, we pass with the def and the name of the function and list of input, in, input parameters or input arguments. And after the caller, we put the return type that also call it as function signature. And after this fu function signature, we put a equal sign, and then within the curly bracket, usually we type the function body. Last expression in that function body is the return type or the return value. 
take it from the last expression. So that's how we define a function. Scala has a very lightweight syntax to create uh, what we call it as anonymous function, functions which don't have specific name. So that is called as anonymous functions or the lambda functions. We can pass those functions, assign those functions to some name and we can maybe assign, handle those functions as we handle the literals. Any, like when we're handling variables, like if you want to handle fixed values, variables, strings, and things like that, you know, like we can define a string literal or maybe then we can define the integer literal like that. Uh, so we could create a, what we call it as functional literal. Functional literal are instantiated into objects called function values. Using those functions values, actually we can exclude those functions. Plus we can pass that function value or functional literal to the other function. So let's have a look first how to define a lambda function. So what we call it as anonymous functions. So in the Scala syntax of creating anonymous function is something like that. It has, we can create it using value keyword, then we may not be able to change that later on. But if you can create a function with variable type as well, right? So in this value, after this value, what we do, we give a name. So this name is kind of a, name is kind of actually a, it's a typical variable. It's a fixed variable, the field name, any identifier you can use for that. So for example, I am creating a, a field name or identifier or what you call value for is zero. And we, I put the assignment sign and then give the function literal. This particular function literal, so I, this is, tells about input parameters. So for example, by in, within the bracket, I can say what are the parameters of this function literal. This function don't have any name. It don't have any name. Like if you want to define a typical function, you know we use def and the name of the function. So here we, this is the functions without any name that is called as anonymous function or the lambda functions. So here you see it don't have any name, but it tells the system its input parameters. So here you see it has only one parameter called integer. And then we put arrow. Arrow it's consider has transform symbol or arrow, transform symbol. So after this transform symbol, we tell here the function body. That is definition of the function. So in other words, this is the function signature, but it don't have name because of that is anonymous. And then after this arrow sign, we have a function body. So in the function body, what tells this input parameter i mod two equal to zero. We check whether this input parameter modulo two equal to zero. If so, it return a Boolean. So the system automatically decides the return value in this anonymous function. So as you see, in general, we, 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 we kind of translate that something called call it as like, we take like input called i and transform into the Boolean value or what we call this part. So that's how, how we interpret that. So then we create what we call it as functional literal. So that literal is assigned to a variable called is even or value called is even. So this is even value can be assigned later on to some other value or pass it to the functions like we are passing integers. So, so here the very lightweight syntax we are creating an anonymous function. I will let you explain again. I am explaining again. This is any variable name we can give it and you to that function. So that is actually a name which we use to access this function. And then after equal sign, so we have to give the input parameters within bracket. It may have no parameters, one parameter or multiple parameters. 
and then we put transform symbol and give the function definition. So by looking at the, according to the function definition, the system decides the return type. So by using this function name, or actually it's not the name value, which, which saw this anonymous function reference, we could use that name to access this function, or we can use that to pass that function to some other function. So that's how we define the anonymous function. Let's have a look. So here, for example, I am creating a function literal or anonymous function uh, uh, for getting the larger, largest value from the two given num in inputs. So here my input to this function, this is A and B, transform to this. So the function body, in the function body it says, it says if A greater than B, return A, else return B. So then it returns the greater value when you pass two parameters to this function. So this function don't have any name, but we assign this to a value called greater. So using the greater, we can access this function later on, or we can pass that function to some other functions. So this is uh, uh, some functions which we can use to call the, um, uh, define the even odd numbers. Uh, so this is kind of the way we use the match case, but in the previous example, it's much simpler to define an even number. Uh, call here is not returning a boolean instead of here, this function to print a even or odd on the terminal based on the input parameter. So here, this anonymous function also takes the input parameter and transform it to a uh, in output, and that basically print even or odd on the terminal, but it won't return anything. Right. So as you may see, we have a very lightweight syntax to define uh, anonymous functions or lambda function in Scala. So using that, we can simply define the function when you want them without using this def keyword. So the anonymous function is a simple way of defining a function. If you get used to that, you may see it's very, very convenient. So by the most of the advantage of having anonymous function is actually we can pass those anonymous function because they are values or the variables to the other functions as we pass integers and strings. So then we can call those function inside of the other function using that variable or the value name. Right, you may understood in a minute how it works Definition of high order functions is basically we define the high order functions are the functions which takes other functions as arguments or a return a function as a return value. So if you have, let's say there is a function and in the in that particular function take a function as its input parameter. In other words, that function, if that function take an anonymous function or lambda function as its input parameter, that call it as a high order function. So also, if there is a function and as a return value of this function, it returns the anonymous function or lambda functions back to the caller, back to the call, uh, back to the whatever the back, back as after each call, let's return a function back. So that call it or that also call it as an anonymous function. So oh sorry, high order function. That also call it as a high order function. High order functions are the functions that take other functions as argument or return functions as return values. So that is the definition. Of high order functions. So basic high order functions, most of the basic high order functions actually take the input as a function. So you can treat function as values, just like strings and name uh, integers. 
you can pass those values into the function. So obviously Scala provides the lightweight syntax to define a function as values. Let's say we define a function as value x. So that value x can be passed to the other function. So this that function, well, it has a high order function. Let's take some examples so you can understand what I mean. So basically, you know, general syntax of the definition of a function so we have the variable name that is anonymous function and then we uh, put the parameter types and then there is a return type so that is how we kind of uh, declare function it's it's a header of the function we can use that to pass or we can use it in the when you define the uh, when you declare a function an anonymous function header so let's have a look in the in the example to understand that we will take several examples to understand this concept so there you see i'm defining a function called hello say hello inside of the argument list there are no arguments like integer or whatever it has a variable or whatever value or input parameter called callback so my input parameter here called back after the colon we have to give the type of this input parameter so for example if the callback is an integer we have to say callback colon int right but this say hello is a high order function so it wants to take another function as an input so then because of that we have to tell the function parameter name colon and we need to tell after that the input type in this high order functions input type is another function so because of that we have to tell the function signature here so here we how we define it so we then first define the input to this function so here you see there are in the bracket nothing so that means it is a function which may not take any inputs and then after this arrow sign it tells the output time so output time is called u unit so basically unit type represent nothing if callers return nothing we tell it as unit so for example this hello say hello function take a function which which take nothing as an input and it nothing return as output so so that's how we define this high order function simple high order function so here simple high order function we define it as the anonymous function this high order function is defined as an anonymous function because that we don't use def keyword here we say value for this anonymous function as say hello and we say equal sign and give the input type of this say hello anonymous function as here call her back is one argument it take that argument is a function which take no inputs and with, without don't do any return no outputs and that particular input it takes by this say hello anonymous function transform to callback that means actually within the body of this say hello we call this callback function right so callback is the name of the input parameter like x y so it within after the callback colon we give we give we have given the definition declaration of that so using that in the function body we can call callback then whatever the parameter we pass into this will be executed so then say hello is a high order function So assume then we define another function called hello cousin, the name is actually value. We define that anonymous function and assign to the value called hello cousin. So this functional literal is no inputs transform to just a print. 
So then I have defined a function called hello UCSC, anonymous function. Uh, here I define anonymous function and assign that to hello UCSC. Actually, I'm not defining a function called hello UCSC, that is wrong. So it says, I am creating an anonymous function called hello UCSC and, UCSC and assign to this value. So similarly here, I'm creating an anonymous function called hello Bazoon and assign to this value, right? So then you see this particular two functions definition has no inputs and no outputs. So because, that, because of that, we can pass this function value to our previously defined say hello function like that. We call say hello and pass in this, or we can call say hello and pass that to this. So that's how this uh, uh, high order functions work. Say hello is a high order function. We define this value as anonymous function as well as we define say hello as anonymous function. Right? So say hello is actually a high order function. So you may, I guess you may still not clear these concepts. So because that, we, in order to be make that more clear let's take more examples so here i am creating two anonymous functions so my first anonymous function we take two integer types and return x plus y so that is it return integer so in the second anonymous function it also take two inputs type and return integer that is the multiplication of these two input parameters so so I assign this fun anonymous function to the value f and this anonymous function to the value multi. So in other words, we can say x and y will transform to the x plus y here. x and y is transformed to the x, minus, x multiply y here in this function. And this transformation will assign to multi. This transformation is assigned to a value called add. You, if you look at these two definitions, anonymous function definition, both has same signature, same functional signature. As you may see, it takes two in input types and return the output. All, all are integers. Input parameters are integers too, and its output parameter also integer. Right. So then we can write an anonymous function if you wish like that. So this anonymous function actually take value or argument called OP. It is a function, right? This OP is a function which take two inputs and return the integer output. So we, here we define our first parameter to the function f. It take a function which has two inputs, type integer, and now after that it take x, some next parameter of function f is integer. And then there is other parameter to this function f that is also integer. So then this particular anonymous function has three input parameters. First one is op, second one is x, third one is y. So those three inputs are transformed to this. So, so what happens here, we get this function value. No? For this function value OP, we pass X and Y. In other words, we call this function, which passes to the function F with the two inputs X and Y. Right? And then we assign this function signature to the value F. So if then after that, if you what what we if you want to add two numbers, we can call that function f something like that. We say f add two values. So then these two values three and four will pass us to this function, which passes here in this instance we are passing add, and the function add will assign to the op and it calls op with x and y. So we return then this function f will return the addition of these two numbers. So similarly, we can call this function in the next time with the input function mul. So that is with mul values. In the previously, I, we defined this mul with two and 
three and four. So then what's happened, this three and four here passes to this because this mul is assigned to this function operator and then value and this value we call it with x and y we pass then this particular call will return three multiplied four. So you see f is a high order function. So we define this high order function also as an anonymous function. Right. So I hope I am not confused you too much, but I want to clarify it clearly. For that, I'll take more examples. So in this example, I define uh, another function that is anonymous function, which take a function as input, as you see. So the input function variable, uh, input argument name here is f. So that is my f is a function. So this f input parameter take two inputs and return time. So f is a function which take two input transform to the integer. So that is the first parameter of this particular anonymous function. So the second parameter of that function is x and the third parameter is y. So then this anonymous function transform this whatever the input parameters into this. So there what happened, I create a value called r by calling this f wire passing here and then x and y. x and y pass to the f and get, it will return some integer value that is i to r. And then I print that r on the terminal. So that is print the calculation or the return value of f onto the terminal. I kind of assign this anonymous function to a value called e print. Right, so then I define as previously two anonymous functions here. Uh, for, uh, first one take two input parameter transform to x multiply y, and the second one take two input parameters and add the x and y together. And x multiply y assigned to this value and x, x plus y assigned to this value, so. So then this definition is matched with the, my input parameter, first input parameter of function e print. Because of that, I can pass either mul or sum to my print function as the is first parameter. And then I can pass two other parameters because my e print function, as you remember, has three parameters. First one is the functional input, other two are the integers. So when I call that sum to uh, uh, 12 and 23, so inside of this e print body definition, you might understand. So value of sum will assign to the input parameter, whatever f, and then it call that f with 12 and 30, 12 and 30, 23, and return value we print on the terminal. That means we get the addition of 12 and 13 on the terminal. So similarly, we can call e print with mul and two input parameters, then these two will multiply together and print it on the terminal. So that is how this anonymous function work. Similarly, uh, lambda, sorry, uh, high order functions work. E print is a high order function. Right, I can take more examples. So in this example, you see I am defining a function called sum int. The, this is the regular or the typical method of defining a function. It is a recursive function. So the sum, sum int will take addition of the integers in between A to B. So let's see how I define that. So I use not the lambda method of defining it. I use a regular method to define sum int here using diff keyword. I gave a name of this function that is sum int. Take two input parameters A and B and return type is integer that is equal to this. What is my definition? This is declaration, and then this definition is if a greater than b, let's return zero, else it return a plus one plus sum it same one with a plus one b. That means I add the a to the the addition of a plus one to b. So this is a recursive code. So this is a base condition. So I recursively call till a greater than b. That means I take the summation from a to b from this summing function. 
So let's say we want to define a function to create sum of cubes. So then in order to do that, I create a function called cube here in the typical way. So I define a function cube, which take one input parameter and calculate the cube. Return type is x multiply, x multiply, x, that is cube. So this typical cube function, which take x, an integer as an input, and return a cube value. So I want to add all cubes values from m, n to m. So that I can use, I can define a function called sum cube. Similarly, sum means I create a function called sum cube, recursive function called sum cube, take two input values and return type also integer. I check whether if a greater than zero, if it's return zero, that is a greater than b, it returns zero, that is base condition. As I add cube of a recursively to a plus one b. That means I, I, I plus, I recursively call some cube function with a plus, a, a plus one and b. So it take all the cubes value a to b and add them together. So this is recursive call of some cube. So if you want to have some square, I have to create a square function and again write a some square recursive function. So that's how we typically do that. So yes, we can, kind of change that typical implement, implementation in much simpler method using the concept of high order functions. Let's see how we can convert that typical implementation which repeat the same thing like this sum in, sum cube, sum square into a normalized implementation of a high order function. So all these sum in, sum cube has the same pattern as you may understand. So same function declaration and the definition. So for example, if I kind of regular uh, normalize it, my sum int and sum cube, it look like that. So I create a general function called sum here, which now take a function as input parameter plus two integer values, that is a to b. So this is a function input. So that function into input, actually this, this parameter take a function which has a in, one input value and one out with to the return input output type. So return type is integer and input type also integer of this function f which we are getting into this function sum. And this function sum also return an integer. So I create this sum as a regular function, it has the anonymous function. So this is a sum declaration of function sum. It has three parameters, function input, in integer a input, and integer b input, two, one function input and two integer inputs. And then what I do, I compare if a greater than b as previously, it returns zero, else what I return is, I apply the function f which I am taken here to the two input parameter, uh, to a first parameter a, and recursively call sum with this function and a plus one b. So that's how I can generalize this sum int and sum q to a function called sum. So the same pattern, right? So then I can create a cube and square functions if I want uh, in anonymous way. So you see, I create a function which take one input and transform to the cube, one input and transform to the square. So this definition will assign to the square and cube values. So this function definition declaration here so the definition here and declaration matches this, F, you know? Because of that, I can call this sum now with q one five. So it returns automatically sum of the cubes. So I can now call this sum function with square now, square one five. That returns summation of the square values from one to five. So how it happens, you see when you call sum q, the cube value, that is the definition of this function assigned to f, and the body will execute. 
So then here in this first, this call, this f is the q function. In the second call, the f is the square function. So it automatically then take addition of the cubes here, addition of the squares here. So, so we need only one function called sum to take all the addition. So that is a high order function because we take a function in function as in its input parameter. So then I can pass whatever the other functions to this sum function if I want to take addition of those cubes, pair, or whatever. So I think you have now better picture about these high order functions. So high order functions can define, so far we define high order function. We take one input parameter, one functional input parameter, and two other parameters, like three parameters. So if you wish, we can define the high order function with multiple functional inputs as well. So for example, here I am creating a function called cal. I am creating this function also as anonymous function. It has a function as a, his first parameter that is f1. f1 function take two inputs and return an integer output. And then I have another functional in, input parameter f2 that also take two input transform to the output same type of input two functions f1 and f2 they are type similar like we are passing x and y's of integers like that to this particular function and after that i am passing two other uh, parameters for x and y both are integers so then i have this particular anonymous function has four input parameters in its signature. So what are they? F1 and F2, same type of functions, and X and Y's integers. So this is a definition, uh, declaration of function which has multiple functional parameters, right? So that particular functions we declare here to the R, transform using this arrow key transform to this. So there what's happened, I call the F1 with X and Y which pass, and I call F2 with the X and Y's pass and return that. So that return two values grouped together that is tuple. So that means there is a function called cal, take two input functions called F1 and F2, and two integer values called X and Y, and return the tuple with two integers. Right. So that is definition of function. So this defined as anonymous function because of that, that definition we assign to a value called cal. So using that value cal, we can call that definition. So how we call that, we say cal, and we can put two input functions. So we have two defined here for well, sum and mod. We pass sum and mod and two integers here. So then what happened? It returned a tuple with first one is addition of these two. <coughs> Sorry. And the second one is the multiplication of these two. This cal function then returned a tuple which has two integers. First is the addition of these two given numbers. Second one is the addition of multiplication of these two given numbers. If you want, since these two F1 and F2 have same functional signatures, you can call cal sum. Here we can also pass sum with these two. <clears throat> then my both output is a summation of these two given input. Similarly, we can call mal sum or sum mal or whatever. So we can state any function which match this signature and apply that to the given two input parameters. So this cal is the high order function. So that exactly how high order functions works. So similarly, we have a concept in functional programming, interesting concept, call it as currying. 
Haring is not related to any, any cooking here. It refers uh, some great uh, uh, mathematician who introduced this Haskell, called Haskell Haring. So he defined the way of calling a function repeatedly. So that means he defined the method or formal method which return to return uh, to actually return a function when you call a function. So we can call a function, it return a function, that function can call another function that returns some function, and then it call another function that returns a function, then it call another function that might return some value. Right? Recursively call functions one after other, and finally maybe some value. So it's calling a function and sequence. So that concept is called curry. So this curry, when you do currying, obviously the, the second call is a high order function because it's called, uh, uh, it returns a function. Second function, it's, it's a high order function. Currying function, it's kind of a high order function. So high order functions are defined like the, if a function take its input parameters as functions, or if a function return a function, as its output type, so that function is called as a high order function. When you do currying, actually those, we use high order functions. Let's understand this currying concept. In the currying, so let's say, we want to add a function which add two numbers, x and y. So then what's in the regular ways, we define a function which take two inputs, x and y and add them together which return x plus y. So that is typical pure function. So we can do the same with the higher order function following this currying principles. So there are what happened which we, in the currying, basically we take only functions with one parameter. So we can convert the, this particular function which take two parameters into a one input as a function which takes one parameter and return a function. And then repeatedly call that, some, something like that. So here we take x single parameter and actually it return a function called plus x. So then we input y to this plus this function and then it returns x plus y. So plus and plus x functions only take one parameter. So the same code, this code only take x and it return a function, same type, and when it call again, that same function with x, it returns final value x plus y. This is not recursive, so this is curry. So you may understand what I mean by looking at this slide. So for example, this is a pure function which we implement add for the plus method, right, plus. This is I define an anonymous function, anonymous, a value called add, which has this plus definition. How it is defined? Take two inputs, transform to x plus y. So very simple. Pure function, it returns. And if, when I call that with add three, five, it returns seven. So this is the way do it is using curry. So in the currying, I say, x, there is a function which take x as input, and tra it transforms to another function which take x as input, and that transform to the finally x plus y. Then there are two consecutive functions which take one input, single input. So the first one take x, and it return another function that take another input called y, and then finally it returns addition of these two inputs taken by these two consecutive all of these functions. So this is called current. It take here a function, it take another y, and then add to it. This is current. So how do you call this current function? Something like that. So this definition of current is assigned to a value add. So it defined as anonymous function. So, or lambda function. We call that function add, and we pass, first function only take a single parameter. So we call it as three. Then that return a function. In the second function, we call back using another input value four. So we call it as add three four. That also returns seven. So that is current. 
So here we are using a function which only takes single parameters. Some functional programming language actually define the function only takes a single parameter, but Scala can have your function with multiple parameters, but here, if you want, you can define your functions, any functions, your functions, which take single parameters by using these pairing principles. So if a regular pure functions, if you define a function like regular pure functions, we call and within the bracket, we give two parameters we're going to pass. If here we pass the first parameter and it return a function, and for the second function, it pass the second parameter. So we put bracket, first input, and then bracket, the third input. Similarly, we can have multiple. So let's take some little complex examples. So here, say, we want to calculate some final value of the product. The final value of the product is basically is a function of product price, service charge, and the value. So for example, if you have, if you given a product price to this function, it may add the VAT, and then it may add the service charge, and then it produces the final price of this product. So here, the definition of regular final price function. It takes two inputs, three inputs. First one is the VAT, then the service charge, and then product price. So and return the final price. So in the final price, this definition, product price plus product price multiply the service charge plus uh, product price multiply the percentage of VAT. So it's in other words, we add the percentage of VAT and the service charge to the product price, it returns the final value of the uh, uh, final value of that product. So when you call the final Price of like that, it returns uh, some answer. So this is a regular way of doing it. So if you want to do it in currying, so we define this function like here. So we define a function which first take it as the product price and transform it to other function. So the next second function call that product price with the back in transform to the third function which we give the service charge and input. And then finally, we transform it to this, product price plus service charge plus value. So if you define this using current principle and assign this definition to the value called final price, we can call that final price, we pass first function the product price, in the second function we pass the value, and the third function we pass the service charge. Like final price bracket thousand, bracket ten, bracket eight. So it returns the same answer. So this is current. So this function actually first call return a function. It, then it call that function with the second parameter, and it return a function, it calls the function with the third parameter, and then it returns the value. So that guy, so this high order function, and also this anonymous function, lambda function, right? So why this is required? So that in some situation simplifies our problem. So for example, let's say we call final price only with the product price. So if we call final price with the product price thousand, what it returns? It returns a function. Actually it returns a function, anonymous function. So we can assign that function final price. When you call the final price with that product, it return anonymous function. We can assign that to a value. So that value, let's assume, well, it has VAT applied. VAT applied has a reference to anonymous function. So then we can call VAT applied function with the percentage of VAT. So when you, the second function. So when you call then VAT applied function with the VAT, then what it returns? It returns the function again. So then we can assign this function to a value called service apply. So service apply value has a reference to anonymous function. So then we can call service apply anonymous function with the service charge, service charge percentage. So that returns the final calculation. That is the price. 
So if you define an anonymous function, we can clearly write those steps into our program like that. This will calculate the, uh, this returns a VAT apply, second function, this returns the third function, and then apply the third function with the service charge, it returns the price. Like that. So assume in some day, so government uh, or the uh, organization ch chain the service charge. So then we don't need to change these two, we only chain here with maybe a percentage 10%. So then it returns the final price. So similarly, let's say, so the same product, government chain the VAT. So then we call change here and it returns the new VAT value. And that with VAT value, when we call the service charge, it returns the price. Then we want to change only these two, like that. So in some extent, when you do carrying this, the function scores or whatever the readability can improve and the changing may be more simplified. So you see, so this is the way we can handle calling different functions one after other like Linux pipelines. So we will discuss that later on. So as you may understood, we are now moving little, little complicated things. So you have to understand what it is, how it is works and so on. So this is, in this session, I want to highlight Lambda functions, anonymous function, the way we can define anonymous function, that functions for it as Lambda functions. So those, when you define a functions as anonymous functions, we can pass those to a different other functions, which define as regular functions or anonymous function, it doesn't matter. We can pass it to the other functions. So that the second function, other functions, we call it as high order functions. So also we can create a functions with return functions. So to do that in the sequence, we call it as currying. So those, when you do currying, also we are using high order functions. Okay, with that, I will conclude that session. So I will uh, record other sessions with uh, demonstration where you may clearly understand those concepts. Thank you.